Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a small asteroid that's going to be approaching very 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 close to Earth on October of 16 of 2017 and may have already passed Earth if you're watching this in the future. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this asteroid right here is actually very interesting. It's not very, very big. It's called 2012 TC4. It's only about uh, 10 to maybe 16 meters in radius. And it's going to be passing very, very, very close to Earth um, when it comes to stellar distances. And I'm going to show you how close it passes in this new simulation from Universe Sandbox. I'm going to be watching it in real time. You may have already lived past this state, but this is something that does happen quite regularly. As a matter of fact, almost every day there is usually an asteroid that passes by Earth, but this one is relatively large. It's a little bit larger than usual. And uh, the distance, the maximum distance that is going to pass at is going to be um, something like 50,000 kilometers, um, which is, I believe, the closest distance ever for this asteroid. It was actually as close as uh, 94,000 kilometers back in 2012. So this is actually its second close approach. And if you look at the distance here compared to the moon, this is where the moon is. So it is a lot closer to Earth than the moon. As a matter of fact, it's eight times closer to Earth than the moon. Now, the interesting thing about this asteroid is that we've been tracking it for the, at these five years. We actually have been keeping track of it because we're using this asteroid to study potential Earth impactors. And okay, we're not really studying them. We're trying to find a way how to avoid these Earth impactors and how to predict their approach and how to essentially redirect them if they do approach Earth. And this is the first time in history that we're using uh, all of our science and all of our knowledge to try to understand how this approach will work, what will happen, and how we can potentially divert this asteroid if uh, we ever need to. Now, one of the things we're using to um, study this asteroid, so this really presents NASA with a kind of a real-life opportunity for impact event study. And uh, since this asteroid will approach Earth again relatively soon in the next few years, uh, we get to actually try to see if we can make some predictions about it. Now, we have actually previously uh, successfully predicted a, an asteroid that did enter Earth. As a matter of fact, back in 2008, there was uh, a somewhat small uh, four meter as a diameter asteroid that entered Earth and basically exploded over uh, the uh, Nubian Desert in Sudan. And this asteroid was essentially very, very, very well studied and predicted and we knew exactly where it's going to um, hit Earth and we knew exactly over what sort of distance and uh, over what area it's going to spread its uh, leftover particles. And so we were even able to collect almost like 10 kilograms of asteroid stuff after the collision. Now, you may have seen uh, the videos from Chelyabinsk in Russia back in 2013 when the asteroid that was about the same size as uh, the asteroid that's about to pass Earth actually did enter the atmosphere and this is kind of what happened. So it's a pretty sort of big event and uh, it was um, well studied and we did it recover some of the particles. But as you can see, the explosion here was quite dramatic. As a matter of fact, the explosion from that asteroid created such a huge shockwave that it was pretty much equivalent, equivalent to something like 26 to 33 Hiroshima bombs all at once. So it was a very, very powerful, almost like a nuclear attack. Um, now this is the asteroid that's going to be passing Earth um, or has passed at Earth on October 12th, 2017. And we're going to collide it with Earth just for fun, just to see what it looks like in Universe Sandbox. And you'll notice that it is so, so tiny compared to the rest of the planet. Uh, now, this is not particularly realistic, and this is actually not the best example. And this is clearly a horrible example of what would happen because it's not going to be such a huge explosion. This is actually a small bug in the game where it kind of treats certain asteroids as too large and creates these explosions that, yes, they look beautiful, but they're not realistic. So for this reason, 
And as you can see, I've just destroyed South America completely. For this reason, we're going to go to another game known as Cities Skylines. And this is a game that I've actually uh, used previously to demonstrate how asteroids and tsunamis form and so on and so forth. And so basically, here we go. Welcome to Rockfield. Population 241,000 people. And what we can do in this game is essentially launch a meteor, or in this case, meteorite, somewhere, anywhere we want in this beautiful city that seems to be thriving. It seems to be doing really well. Actually, as a matter of fact, it's doing too well. We need to curve it down a little bit. And I think I think the, the area that I really, really want to strike is right here. Okay, call me murderous, but this is where I want to hit it. Now, this uh, asteroid I'm launching is actually a little bit too big. We need to decrease its size because the one that is going to be approaching Earth is only about uh, 16 meters or 13 meters in diameter. So we're going to be striking uh, this stadium right here. And we're going to wait and see uh, what happens when the uh, meteorite strikes this area. And then we're going to assess the damage. So here we go. Let the game begin and let's watch what happens. And while we're waiting for it, let's just explore the city a little bit. As you can see in this game, everything is... Um, actually quite realistic there's people walking around there's cars driving around there's uh, all of this normal life going on nobody has any idea what's coming toward the stadium right there and there's quite a lot of donut uh, trucks for some reason i think uh i think this is a little bit disturbing actually why is, why are there so many donut trucks maybe the city deserves being hit by an asteroid no i, I didn't mean that Anyway, so, um, something to consider when this meteorite strikes the city. First of all, there's only about 3% chance that any asteroid striking Earth is going to be hitting the city, because uh, urban areas only are approximately 3% of the entire surface of our planet, so that kind of decreases the chance of striking a city by 3%. Also, this is not a stadium. Oh my god, this is an Eden project? Oh, I didn't even know that. That increases the land value in the city and removes pollution. Oh my god, I'm a horrible person. I'm about to destroy something that removes pollution. Oh, but now I feel horrible. Well, I'll have to deliver this for the rest of my life. But that's okay. Now, in the last few years, scientists have actually been able to learn how to predict the location of uh, the actual asteroid approach and also the collision relatively accurately. As a matter of fact, uh, today we can predict um, this asteroid's location within about 15 kilometers. So we can actually kind of know where it's uh, going to hit within about 15 kilometer uh, radius. And this is, uh, this is pretty impressive because, you know, years ago we had no idea where things like that would happen. All right, so this is an asteroid that's approaching. Oh, that's not really good for people that are working in the Eden Project. And while the scientists are studying this asteroid, they've actually also started to work on different um, ways of trying to essentially divert these asteroids. And it's actually something that um, in the movies is always portrayed with a nuclear bomb, but as I mentioned in a previous video, it doesn't work that way. As a matter of fact, nuclear bombs are the worst possible solutions to the asteroid problem because they'll just end up bringing all the pollution and nuclear waste to us, to our planet. Oh, here it comes. I think the asteroid is coming and we're about to... Oh, wow. This is going to be quite an event. So there it is. And wow, look at that. I can actually see it very well. We even see its name. Its name is uh, Libitina. It's a meteor that's heading to Rockfield at the speed of 1300 kilometers an hour. And it's about to strike our beautiful Eden project. And here we go. Okay, the most attractive city award was just awarded to the city, but I don't think it's going to last very long. Alright, so that was a slightly larger asteroid than I should have launched, but as you can see, the destruction has been pretty dramatic. Several buildings destroyed, the entire uh, Eden project is gone, buildings are on fire, and um, trees are on fire as well. So, what are the three possible solutions to... Uh, diverting asteroids from hitting our planet. Well, so far we came up with three realistic ones. One of them is actually a huge ion cannon that uh, uses lasers to try to divert the um, asteroid over the period of several years. 
Um, other one is actually launching a very, very fast moving um, spacecraft and smacking it head on with the, well not head on, but side uh, to the side of the asteroid so that it can actually once again divert the asteroid from colliding uh, with the location. Just for fun, let's, let's do another one, but this time bigger. So there's going to be another collision somewhere in this area, but this time it's going to be the largest asteroid this game can actually create. Um, and we're going to watch and see what happens. And so these types of asteroids are actually quite dangerous, and there's uh, quite a few of them out there that might one day collide with our planet Earth. Uh, and this is actually a size of about 300 meters, and we've currently been tracking at least a dozen of them, um, and quite a lot of them are relatively dangerous. Oh, and the last uh, solution, the third solution, is something known as the gravity tractor. This is when you actually try to pick up a very large object from the surface of the asteroid and keep it there, hovering in the same position so that over time the gravity from that object attracts the asteroid and basically makes it change its um, actual uh, velocity. It basically diverts it that way. And here comes the largest asteroid in the game that's about to strike this beautiful building right there. We're going to watch this from this particular uh, location and this angle. This looks pretty amazing. So um, we need to always remember that there's always a chance for a small asteroid collision on our planet because they are basically pass by our planet pretty much daily. And this is something we need to learn to track even better. And even today, we're really, really good at doing it. Uh, hopefully in the next few years we'll develop a slightly better strategy for how to actually not only track and detect them, but how to actually uh, even divert them way, way ahead of time. So this is something we're going to be studying in the next few years. Oh my god, look at that humongous explosion with cars flying everywhere. That is just ridiculous. Yeah, this is uh, something we would want to definitely avoid from ever happening. That was definitely a worthy of a nuclear explosion. Look at all the damage it caused. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. But remember, this asteroid that I mentioned in the beginning of the video is not going to be striking Earth, even in the next few hundred years. So you have nothing to worry about. Don't go spraying the rumors that we're, the world is about to end, because that's not true. Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Hopefully you enjoy the simulation of the destruction of the city. And hopefully you know a little bit more about asteroids and how we track them and how they collide with our planet Earth. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And I still can't believe I destroyed the Eden project. That was a horrible thing to do. What is wrong with me?